Hi friends, I'm Sarah. Welcome back to my channel, Sunset Bow Tarot. So today I wanted to do a quick walkthrough and first impressions of a deck that I just got. I'm pretty sure that this was just recently released by Llewellyn, like this week or something like that. Um, and it was one that I had actually been really looking forward to because I am a big fan of the artist. Um, the artist of this deck is Nick Bantock, who is uh, the creator of a number of books, including um, a lot of people might have heard of the book Griffin and Sabine, which is part of a series of books that were first published back in the 90s. So this was when I was a teenager. I was super obsessed with his books and his artwork. I thought they were so cool. Um, I have most of his books, I think. I'll, I'll insert a... Uh, a picture maybe of my uh, collection of Nick Bantog books so that you can see what my collection looks like. But um, I, I really enjoy his work. I enjoy his artwork. Um, he does a lot of sort of collage style artwork with a lot of different pieces of ephemera and it's just an art style that I really really enjoy and so when I saw that he was creating a deck I was so excited. So this was a deck that I probably would have been very tempted to purchase regardless of how well I thought it might work out for me just because again I am a fan of the artist and I do have a lot of his other books and things that he's created but um, in this case I was actually quite excited about the type of deck that it was because it's an archetypes deck and um, I have had some other archetypes decks in the past that I haven't really connected with or that um, other ones that I haven't purchased that I've looked at and haven't been all that interested in so one example would be I did at one point own the Caroline Miss archetype deck, which just wasn't quite right for me. I think the main problem with it was that uh, the artwork was really tiny on it and it didn't really contribute much, I felt like, to the meaning of the card. You know, the cards were very wordy with very tiny artwork and so it wasn't anything that I could really work with very well intuitively, I felt like, just because the artwork was not very central to the card. Um, it was mostly just cards with words on them. Um, so there was that one. I've also looked at the Kim Cran's uh, Wild Unknown archetype deck, but I honestly just don't love the artwork of that one. I have mixed relationships in general with most of Kim Cran's decks. I, I love the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Oracle. Um, I was not a, a big fan of the Wild Unknown Tarot. I had a hard time connecting to that one. So the Archetype deck, I was just sort of, hmm, I don't think that I, that's one that I'm interested in. But this one I am very excited about. So I do know that this does have fewer cards, I believe, than like the Caroline Miss Archetype deck, for example, which has a lot of cards in it. But um, again, because I really love the artist and the artwork, this is one that I'm very excited about. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Again, this is a Llewellyn publication. This is actually a much smaller box than your normal Llewellyn box. It is a, um, you know, kind of bookshelf magnetic flap type of box, but normal Llewellyn boxes are, you know, good several inches bigger on both sides than this one is. This is a very sort of small, compact one. Um, and so it says, yeah, build your inner life with a cast of colorful archetypes. And you can kind of see a little bit of what his art style looks like. It looks like he's even used some artwork from uh, historical tarot decks, which is kind of cool. Um, like I said, his art style is very collagey and he uses a lot of ephemera in it. So let's go ahead and open this up. Um, wow, it's really pretty on the inside. So here we have um, a guidebook, the Archeo, Understanding and Developing Your Archetypes. So we'll take a look at that in a second. But let's start obviously by, ooh, look how pretty that is. Let's start by taking a look at the cards because obviously that is what everyone is most interested in usually. So the cards themselves are actually, they're quite large as you can see. It's interesting that this is really a small Llewellyn box with really big cards that are larger than normal Llewellyn cards. So the box is smaller than normal, the cards are bigger than normal. Um, but uh, they are like, you can see how big they are if I uh, take a sort of standard US Games tarot card, you can see that these are really quite large cards. Um, you know, they're a good more than an inch taller and a solid close to an inch wider. Um, so they are quite big. This is your sort of normal Llewellyn cardstock. 
that they've been using recently. Um, it is a bit glossy and it is quite thin, but I don't mind Llewellyn cardstock because I like the way that it shuffles. And I do find that it, it is pretty durable. Um, my Llewellyn decks hold up fine. I've never had any issues with them. As a riffle shuffler, they work just fine for me. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at this artwork. This is what the backs look like. It's interesting. It looks like maybe it's it's a colored pencil drawing and there there's some other stamping and letters and other ephemera kind of around it, but it is really pretty. And so the titles of the cards are on the side here. Um, so we start with the alchemist and I like this symbol for the alchemist. I like the choice of imagery there. Um, here we have angel. We have anima and animus. We have Arbiter. I like that. Actually, that is a very, very cool image. We have Awakener. <laughs> this is actually really sweet, this little owl tooting a horn for this sleepy lion. I just, I love his art style. I love the, you know, choices of the different ephemera that he includes along with the illustrations. Here we have Demon, Dreamer, Duende, I believe is how you pronounce that. Eccentric. That's kind of fun. Falcon. Fatalist. That's interesting. So it's, it, we've got this sort of up and down here and the wheels are turning and this woman is blindfolded. She's gonna go one way or the other. She doesn't know which way, but she seems pretty accepting of whatever ends up happening to her. Grace. And this is interesting because it's this acrobat, but with a mask and a tail. Green Man. That's a beautiful card. Healer. Heraeth. I assume is how you pronounce that. Hypocrite. This is interesting. Definitely some references to the Catholic Church here. Illuminator. That's beautiful. And this, I believe, is the Sutton from the um, Atea Tarot, I believe. Innocent. This has almost got a reference here to Pinocchio, I guess which is an interesting idea for an innocent because, you know, it's this whole idea of, you know, maybe you're a liar, but maybe you don't know why things are right or wrong, or, um, you know, you end up in a bad situation because you get carried away by other bad people, which is, you know, part of what happens with Pinocchio um, in the story. So that's a really interesting take on the concept of innocent. Here we have Intimate. Inventor. That is really cool. I believe that's Leonardo's flying machine. Jester. Lion. Magician. Metamorph. I really like this. This reminds me of the, uh, the secret card in the uh, pagan other worlds. Midwife. That is a very cool choice of archetype. Midwife. I like that a lot. Mobius. Mooncat. Love it. <laughs> We've got some more symbolism from the Atea here. Observer. Poet. Reflector, Sage, Shadow Diver. That is interesting. I really like this imagery. That is cool. Siren, Star Climber, Strategist, Survivor, Trickster, 
Wanderer, Warrior, Wolf, and then there are a couple of blank cards, I assume, so that you can create your own. This is similar to what the Caroline Miss Archetypes deck has, is some blank cards so that you can create some of your own archetypes to add to the deck. So we'll set those blank ones aside, but um, on the whole, I really like this. I, I like the choices of archetypes. There's some really interesting ones. It is too big for me to shuffle. I'm sorry to say, I'm not gonna be able to get my hands around it, sadly, but um, we can go ahead and uh, overhand shuffle it. And I'm gonna just go ahead and shuffle a little bit. Obviously, you know, it's a Llewellyn deck. The, it overhand shuffles just fine. It's not my favorite way of shuffling, but there aren't actually a ton of cards in this deck, and it's probably not the kind of deck where you're going to be, you know, drawing more than one card at a time, so this shuffling method works just fine for me. Um, but let's go ahead and pull a card and take a look at what it says about that card in the guidebook and sort of take a better look at the guidebook as well. All right, so I actually pulled the lion card, which is an interesting one. There were a couple of specific animals as archetypes in this deck. So there was lion, there was wolf, there was falcon, and I'm curious to see what the guidebook has to say about those. But let's go ahead and just take a general look at the guidebook, and then we'll look up what it says about the lion card. So the guidebook is the Archeo, Understanding and Developing Your Archetypes. And there is that Arbiter card. I really like that one. That one's beautiful. Here's the Wolf and the Innocent. Uh, this is, It's a beautiful guidebook. It's glossy pages. It's um, on the back, create your own hero's quest, meet your faithful companions. Um, and it gives you some examples of, uh, you know, how you can relate to these different cards. It looks like there's 40 cards total. I didn't take a look at that before I started looking through, but it looks like there's an introduction and then it starts going through all of the different archetypes. And then there's some additional information in the back here, uh, spreads and, and etc. So here is the introduction and it starts, imagine your inner life as a quest. You're a hero's journey across a dramatic terrain. Would you want to travel that long road alone or would you rather have a company of good companions at your side? That's not as abstract a question as it might seem because inside each of us, within our personal mythological domains, we have a fellowship of potential compatriots who, given the opportunity, would willingly accompany us. So that's interesting. I'm looking forward to reading the rest of this um, and, you know, seeing what it, it has to say. Um, and then if we take a look here at the characters, so there's a full color, full page uh, picture of the card here. And then it goes into at attribute and persona for each of the archetypes. And so if we flip through here, you can see, you know, it has all of this information um, for each one of the cards. Lion, attribute. If you can convince him to be with you, you will also learn to temper your spurious inclinations. And if circumstances demand it, you'll be able to call upon his massive strength and ferocity. But he's not your pet. His noble heart exists to protect the abused and misused, and he abhors the cruelty of self-serving authority. Persona. The lion has learned to tame the youthful inclinations that once led him to waste his power. Instead, through resolve and self-restraint, he has harnessed his stamina. Merely watching his massive shoulder blades rising and falling like pistons informs you of the force contained within his frame. Noble of heart and slow to stir, the lion is, for the most part, passive, but when provoked, he becomes a formidable force. When rampant, his will is uncontainable, and he will snap any chains placed upon him as if they were cotton thread. If you're able to convince the lion to accompany you, his presence will give you great security. However, you must never take him for granted. While he, whilst he will defend you against threat, he is principally there to protect the abused and those oppressed by author authoritarian misrule. That is interesting. So um, it's it really comes at each of these cards as though they are a companion for you and like what it would mean for them to be a companion for you. So that's a really interesting way of coming at it. That's, um, I, I'm gonna, you know, have to work with this and see how it ends up working for me. But I think it is an interesting concept to think of all of these archetypes as sort of companions that you bring with you on your journey through life and ones that are sort of present within you all the time and when you might need to call upon them. So um, here we have layouts and spreads. Um, and it just explains, you know, just doing short spreads medium spread, full spread. He also includes an alternative way of using the deck, 
where you have it face up and instead of shuffling um you actually just ask yourself which cards you're drawn to and then ask them what that is expressing to you you know the fact that you're drawn to these particular cards what does that mean so that is another interesting way of of using it so he also has a section here on growing and expanding your sort of pantheon of archetypes and gives you a list of questions to try to figure out what additional um, archetypes you know you might be able to identify that are part of you so there's another interesting section here on building an internal country for your archaeo to inhabit so it's really like mapping out your inner landscape and you know how, where they live where these different archetypes live within you which is super interesting so there's another section here uh archaeo tales which is a short tale for each one of the cards and they're all hundred word drabbles um so i'm gonna go through and find the lion's tale so here's the lion's tale the four winds chanced upon an old lion standing on a rock and resenting the creature's strength agreed to drive it from the ledge Zephyr sucked in his cheeks and blew, but his breeze merely ruffled the lion's mane. Shiroko then tried peppering the lion with hot desert sand. The lion stood immobile. Next, Mistral unleashed his cruel icy blast. The lion didn't flinch. Finally, Boreas, the strongest of the brothers, summoned his sledgehammer power and delivered a great storm force gust. The lion, waking from his reveries, opened his mouth and roared them away to the four corners of the compass. So this is an interesting story. You know, it suggests that the lion archetype can really stand fast against whatever winds kind of buffet you. You know, it, it really suggests that the lion archetype is a sort of stable force that possesses greater power than whatever thinks it might be able to uh, to move it. You know, it's it's really the, the lion is the immovable object in this uh, in this tale. So that's really interesting. So there you have it. Uh, this is a new deck called the Archeo. It's a set of archetype cards by the artist and author Nick Bantock. Um, I'm really excited to start working with this, see how it goes, um, and start, you know, taking a closer look at all of these cards and really picking out the various little details in the artwork. That was something that I always really enjoyed uh, about his other art and his books. And so I'm going to enjoy pouring over these cards as well, just as much and taking a read of the guidebook and uh, learning some more about the archetypes that he's chosen to include here. So I'm very excited about this. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at this pretty new deck that just came out from Llewellyn. And thanks so much for following along with me. Just a reminder that there are links down below this video in the description box to my website if you are interested in booking a reading with me. Um, the website is down below. It's sunsetbow.com. Thanks again for spending some time with me today and have a great one, everyone. Bye-bye.